Rick and Dee talked about how workforce development, economic development, and community development are so closely intertwined. And what Lily has helped us also understand is how workforce development, education, and training is closely intertwined with individuals being able to compete and receive wages, which help them for a sustainable uh, family. The, this is a complex issue, and that's why I've titled Building Opportunity Through Partnering. We are not going to be able to address this issue without partnering. And within this community, I feel like that we are very lucky with the partners that have come together and are coming together uh, to address our workforce challenges in the region. Kirkwood Community College's mission is in the essence, I believe, of workforce development in terms of identifying needs, providing access and opportunity to education. This is just a little bit about how, who we are, and the reason I put this slide in here is I think it also talks to the impact education and training has within our region due to the number of graduates at Kirkwood that live and work in Iowa, and in particular in our region. It's about 75% to 80% stay in our region that graduate. Uh, we are working and have been working for many years and continue to work towards being a labor market responsive community college. Our learner success agenda is squarely placed within labor market responsiveness ensuring that we are helping our students complete to compete um, and that we are continuing to strengthen our regional leadership role through partnering with regard to workforce and economic development. Uh, at Kirkwood Community College, we're very fortunate to be able to partner with the Iowa Workforce Development System and the Iowa Works Office located in Cedar Rapids in Iowa City. Through that effort, uh, we are liaisons to the Regional Workforce Investment Board, and that board is established to ensure that particularly the federal funds that flow through our community are aligned to the workforce needs of the community. So individuals that are receiving case management, tuition support, child care and transportation, those investments are being made in occupations and careers which are in demand and pay sustainable wages within the, within the community. Uh, I just talked about Iowa Works in Iowa City and Cedar Rapids. Uh, they're engaged in uh, working with job search, um, uh, resume building, uh, training and development, transferable skill assessment to again assist employers with their workforce needs. Uh, as Dee talked, the skills studies are, are one mechanism we use to ensure we're remaining in close contact and that we're listening to what employers are telling us about their workforce needs. We also engage in a variety of other tools, um, again, to ensure we're data informed. I like the info action. Um, a comment that Rick made. So we do use labor market data, uh, our local employer data. Uh, we also um, are really stepping up our work with industry clusters and industry sectors. I know I've seen several members here from our advanced manufacturing industry cluster. And what that, that, those organizations do as employers, they come together to talk about their common workforce needs and other needs that they have. The Advanced Manufacturing Industry Cluster, for instance, one of the areas of concern that they have is uh, they have good occupations, high wages, sustainable living. However, sometimes the perception of that career or occupation is not the best, particularly because of how manufacturing was hit in the recession, even though our region fared very well as a manufacturing community during the recession. So that employer group, that's one of their agenda items. What can they do as employers to address that perception to help increase the pipeline of workers that will be coming to their organizations? We use focus groups. Um, most recently, we are pulling together a group of employers in healthcare claims management, revenue cycle management, because again, the data was telling us this is a growing occupation area in the region, and employers were saying our applicant pools are extremely tight. So we've pulled a focus group together to see 
is there something we might be able to do to help address this and get individuals the skills to compete for positions within that cluster? All of our academic programs have advisory committees comprised of employers in the region that provide counsel and advice. Uh, we're in the process of developing a workforce regional service plan under the direction of the Regional Workforce Investment Board, which we're very excited about. And then we also uh, uh, enter into the public policy work uh, that Steve has uh, helped lead uh, with partners such as United Way and the National Skills Coalition. So at Kirkwood, we have several different audiences uh, that we support through workforce development opportunities. We have our academic programs, which are largely one-year diploma and two-year degree programs. We have our continuing professional education programs, which are short-term certificate and skills credential programs, which now are aligned and in the future when any pro new program is developed, they are aligned to the credit one year and two year diploma. Our philosophy is there should be no loss point. A student is a student at Kirkwood Community College. If they come through the doors of a short term credentialing program because of their current life circumstance, they can give 16 weeks, but they don't know if they can give two years yet. They should be able to get that 16 weeks work, but when they are ready or have a tuition reimbursement plan at an employer, they can come back and still have credit for that short-term program that they took. Um, employer contracted training, uh, Amy Lasik leads our division there, uh, just doing a ton of work right now with employers with regard to training uh, their existing workforce. And we are continuing to do more work uh, with the populations that are underemployed and unemployed that need to get to the $18 and $20 an hour jobs. Uh, programs like KPACE, Pathways for Academic Career Education and Employment, are one uh, mechanism. Uh, and I'll talk about some other new programs we have and existing programs that work with that. We have uh, also available to us because of the support of our legislature tools that we can use to address the workforce issues. Uh, tools that are available to businesses, new and existing, to train their employees. Uh, we have our Gap Tuition Assistance Fund, which had been piloted at several community colleges and just this past year received funding from the legislature. And this is a tool that allows us to help individuals who are 200% uh, or below of the federal poverty level, so it's the individuals who are underemployed, are at that eight, ten, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve dollar an hour range, to take short-term credentialing programs to either start them on a pathway to a diploma or degree, or move them into the workforce at a higher wage. This fund pays for that tuition. Because our federal financial aid program does not recognize non-credit education. It is not eligible for Pell. This is a mechanism we can use then uh, to assist individuals whose life circumstance dictates a short-term intervention at this time. We also have a workforce training fund, uh, which is used really in a similar manner to GAP, but it really is helping us do more of the targeted industry cluster work and development of new programs. Uh, we refer to it often as our innovation fund at, at Kirkwood because it helps us provide the resources we need to flush out new programs like our new renewable energy uh, distribution degree that we have um, on campus. And then we continue to work with grants and private foundations to braid as many funding streams as we can to get our resources out to individuals in need. So I just wanted to talk a little uh, bit about, I was asked to talk about what uh, strategies uh, we have put in place uh, to address the workforce development needs. These are a few of them, uh, which particularly tie to training and education. Uh, there are many other ways we're trying to engage in the workforce community uh, through our uh, Workplace Learning Connection Office in terms of increasing opportunities for internships, uh, through our Career Services Office at Kirkwood who works with alumni, community members, and students to help prepare them uh, out to the job market. 
So um, in response to needs that have come forward through this data and through our work with employers, these are a variety of programs that have been developed recently. Our energy production and distribution degree began a year or two ago. We leveraged some state funding in order to be able to get that very expensive degree off the ground. Uh, you can imagine the type of equipment we have. If you haven't had a chance to tour our renewable energy center, I recommend that you do. It's, um, it's pretty remarkable. We have a new advanced manufacturing technology degree that was put in place based on impact uh, and uh, based on what we heard from our advanced manufacturing employer group. We will be launching a logistics certificate next fall. Yvonne Vogensen and her team have been working on that. Again, one of our growing industry clusters that was clear in Skills 2014. Uh, our pharmacy tech diploma is addressing a need. Our customer service professional certification was really our first foyer into industry cluster work in uh, 1998. And it's been a program that has stayed in existence through today. It's probably on its fourth or fifth iteration of curriculum to keep up with the industry's needs. But it is a program that we pull off the shelf when it is in demand. It's not necessarily offered every semester. Uh, and so we are in the process of pulling it off the shelf because we have heard a tightening with regard to the customer service representative positions in the region. We, youth is another area of our workforce uh, population uh, that we need to keep our attention on. So we've been doing some uh, STEM related camps to try to help uh, that workforce arm for the region. Uh, our most recent uh, pilot project, which because of the results we're now replicating in Lynn County, is very similar to the program uh, that Rick talked about in Dubuque, being a short-term C&C, uh, one semester uh, training program. Uh, and then we also have the same program established for welding. And it is an opportunity for individuals to receive tuition, childcare, and transportation assistance as they go through to complete this education with employers who have committed to interview and hire after they receive their credentials. I I've, I've talked about our work with industry consortiums and sector boards. Uh, you know, currently we're working with the information technology sector, uh, advanced manufacturing, our call center uh, industry sector, and we just uh, have started up a health services industry sector. Um, and so again, partnering. This wouldn't, these programs would not be possible if it wasn't for the employers, and that's a big part of the solution. Um, I've always said, if employers endorse and recognize the certificate program because they've been involved in determining the learning competencies and skills, so they understand when someone presents that resume and has that on it, exactly the skills they have, which some will deem as experience, and we can place that into our orientation and information sessions and allow our students to tour those facilities, if we build it, they will come. But without that connection, it is sometimes very difficult for an individual to understand this, will, this investment will get them to where they need to be to support themselves and their family. Um, I want to close by talking about our Pathways program, which has uh, just been a wonderful experience for us at Kirkwood. Uh, and we are co so complimentary of our partnership with United Way because we would not be able to do this work without that support. Uh, so the Pathways program is a program which is solely focusing on the targeted population that is low income, has socioeconomic barriers, as well as some life barriers to be able to be being able to be successful in college. So it's a partnership between Kirkwood, United Way, community-based organizations, and local employers. Uh, we are developing uh, comprehensive career pathways that facilitates adults learning through a series of chunks of modules, curriculums, or programs. Um, 
we know an individual looking at a two-year degree can seem, well, oh, there's no way I can do that, so I'm just not going to go to college. But when you can chunk that out and show them, okay, let's look at the first 16 weeks. Here's what you need to accomplish. When you accomplish that, here's going to be the next step. But there's a pathway navigator, an individual who's working with this population to navigate their educational journey. Pretty similar to the healthcare system. Um, and so we've taken some learnings from the healthcare systems and are applying it within our educational systems to help them navigate and move along that journey. Uh, we are uh, implementing some best practices. Uh, you may have heard of programs in Washington State and Kentucky and Arkansas. They're getting a lot of play in the nation with regard to their work on uh, integrated programs which take basic skills training and couple it with occupational credentialing training. So I'm basic skills deficient. I'm not at college level math or reading and probably not writing. So I'm going to need to spend my first semester at least in pre-college courses before I can move into my occupational courses. We have a bit of a loss during that first semester because again, they're not seeing the connection to what awaits after that. So we're merging those two together so individuals can receive a credential within their first, first phase with us at the institution. And then that also provides them more options because let's, life happens. And so if after that first phase they have a credential and it, they just can't continue on to the next block, they wouldn't be successful continuing on to the next block. They have a credential that is recognized in the community that will at least help them gain a higher wage than where they were before they came into the program. We believe a unique attribute uh, to that program is the uh, pathway navigator role, which I've explained. We also uh, want to, we are and want to work even more closely with community-based organizations um, in this communication process of individuals community-based organizations are working with that we think education and training uh, can assess, assist them move, for, uh, move forward with their uh, lives. I've, I've always said for this, this type of a program, Kirkwood Community College should not be the only organization involved in assisting populations move to higher levels of education and attainment. Uh, and so uh, we, want, we are very interested in working with other organizations to scale this up um, because there's a certain number you can handle through these programs. In, and we're finding even with our research on scaling, we're going to hit a maximum point in terms of what we're going to be able to handle through the Kirkwood pipeline. This shows you graphically what that progression of um, certificates to credentials uh, is. About 40% of our students in the pathway programs do not have a GED and 60% do. Uh, the math level is between 8th and 9th grade and a reading level is 9th to 11th grade. So in the first block, it's getting their basic skills, a credential, and if they don't have their GED, a GED. Uh, from that uh, uh, sequence, they then move into a college readiness boot camp, which occurs right before the start of a semester, uh, to ensure they are engaged and aware of the resources within the, the community college system. and. Uh, getting some math and more math and reading prep. Then they are articulated into their first credit diploma, which right now we have pr programs that align in allied health, advanced manufacturing, which we're focusing on welding, and our administrative office assistant or really customer service representative is another good field for there. So it, it is a pathway to higher wages. Um, and we have had uh, success, I think, I want to say our retention rate is at about 87%. So they're 
to continue them moving on uh, through their progression. Our uh, credentialing rate is higher than that, um, and our employment rate is right around 75%, so we want to move that up. But again, the goal really is to keep them moving. Uh, we'd prefer they not exit to employment before they get their one-year credit diploma or two-year degree. Lily's shown you get more wage benefit at that time. Um, so that's our overall goal. But as we say, life does happen, and we want to be sure we can help them get a job if they decide they can't continue, continue on. Uh, just briefly, some public policy work. Uh, so we've been working on GAP and CAPE on PACE legislation, and we continue to evaluate additional programs or resources that we might add into that program. One thing we're looking at is some sort of a middle skills internship program, our industry sector coalition work. And then access to public benefits. The number one reason students drop out is due to financial reasons. We have resources to fill a gap. Are we ensuring our students are connecting to the resources that are available to them while they are in our educational pathways? And that's one, another area the pathway navigators have really focused on. And while we have funds available for child care and support, they've done such a good job at connecting with other programs, we haven't had to tap into, the, into those funds for that need as much. Our regional education centers will be coming online. Another way we are trying to move into kind of that junior, senior year of career preparation for workforce development. These are our new centers that will be coming online. And I just love this. Um, picture and a student is a student because 70,000 futures have started at Kirkwood.